Hi, I'm Mateusz and today I will show you how I created a display base with a demon invasion theme. I recently started 3D printing some minis and I still feel like a noob in this hobby. I discovered my mini factory, some inspiring kickstarters and finally a Patreon. So many minis, I don't know where to start. Oh, a competition. And these demons look very nice. I wonder who is this Archvillain Games. They say their minis are pre-supported. I bet this is important. Ok, let's try it out. And wabam! I printed and assembled my first mini. This support staff was very helpful and done in such a way that I didn't need to spend much time cleaning. Nice! I still noticed some layer lines, but man this mini is top notch. There is simply no comparison to PVC plastic models from board games that I usually paint. Ok, so I want to paint a mini for a competition. And I want to do something original. I'm pretty confident my painting skills will deliver a satisfactory result, but I'm not sure how to differentiate this demon from other entries. I think I need some research. This is an important part. So I prepared myself a warm cup of coffee and started procrastinating. I mean uh, researching. This is totally legitimate research. Ah, but really, Instagram didn't help much. Time to use an ultimate source of mini painting inspiration and depression, putty and paint. Oh, these minis are all so well painted by all those talented and experienced painters. Stop, no time to feel envious. Let's look for some demons. Whoa, I expected more of classical Diablo Red or black dark as depths of hell. Wait a moment, this one is painted by Roman Lapat. My first mini painting crush. It's decided, I want to make something similar. But every picture needs a frame. And I wanted to try something out for a long time. Let's paint a background. And there is only one topic suiting this mini. Apocalyptic invasion from hell. <laughs> <coughs> but first things first, we need to build something. I've got some leftover wood pieces from my friend. They are a little damaged, but it kind of suits this apocalypse theme, isn't it? This wood block will make a great base and this MDF board will make a background. I cut them some time ago, so why not use them now? They only needed a little painting with acrylic wood varnish. While it was drying, I grabbed another block of the same size and started some tryout assemblies. Mini fits perfectly. The base is roughly the same size as its wing spread. My first impression is that this guy is running through some stone rubble, probably in the mountains. And I know the perfect material for this specific application, a tree bark. Or to be more specific, an oak bark. You can get it for free in a forest or sometimes in parks. But if you are not a scavenger like me, go to some gardening store or a home depot and buy a bag for a few pennies. I picked a piece roughly the same size as the base and cut it into smaller bits. I used a small wood saw and my multi-tool pliers. I didn't leave it on one chunk, because I wanted some cracks and less obvious structures. I knew that stony base won't be interesting enough on its own. And in the meantime I was struck with an idea. Let's add some glowy crystals to the base. And while assembling bark bits, I decided that crystals will go in a biggest crack. Maybe they are part of an invasion. Maybe the land itself was corrupted by evil magic. Or maybe these crystals are the sole reason for this demon incursion. I like it. 
I only needed to add some dry, dying vegetation to complete a picture in my head. I started the assembly with milliput and wood glue. Milliput was there to fill all the gaps underneath the bark. I wanted a uniform look, so no holes between base and stones. Also, painting such gaps is pain in the neck. Milliput blobs didn't really look nice. So I used bark fragments to add texture to every visible piece. I simply pushed them into the potty, so they will leave an imprint. I also used my putty to fix vegetation and crystals in place. I really like this part of our hobby. Fitting all small pieces, building something up from scratch gives me a lot of satisfaction. But the most magical part for me is the moment when I spray paint whatever I build. And I do it in a very specific way. I use the zenithal priming technique. First I give a base an overall coat of dark paint, making sure it got into every crevice and hole. Nowadays I avoid using pure black. Shadow colors tend to appear colder, so I noticed that if I use very dark cold color, it will make my future work a little easier. In this case I'm using navy blue. I gave it a few minutes to dry and proceeded with the next step. I grabbed a white spray can, shook it well and started spraying my base from above. This way paint is only hitting up facing surfaces and creating an illusion of light and shadow. In the meantime I slapped some first colors on the mini to check out if they work together nicely. Fun fact, I used only two paints, red and cyan, to paint most of that, with some addition of black in the shadow and yellow in fiery parts. Time to put some paint on the base. I'm going to mostly use filters in this process, so I should probably tell you what they are. Basically, the filter is a very translucent paint that is used to change the hue of the layers underneath. If you want to know what is a hue, saturations and some other stuff, I selected this very informative video especially for you. Also some more of those in-depth videos are coming, so consider subscribing if you don't want to miss them. Some examples. I'm going to paint all over my base, but all this light and shadow situation will come through. The more advanced approach is, in example, to paint over some yellow and violet with red filter, to change their appearances to orange and magenta. I'll use a filter this way later on to paint crystals. To make a filter I'm diluting my acrylic inks with glazing medium and ultramat varnish by match, about 1 to 1 ink to diluent. Why matte varnish you might ask? Well, inks are super glossy, and they tend to get in a way of making good photos. And ultra matte varnish gets rid of that pretty well. If you want to use a filter yourself, you can use a wash or a glaze this way. For a filter to do its magic, it is more important what is underneath. I mixed some dark blue with yellow sepia to create this very dark, a little brownish grey and painted all over the base. I also applied some random pools of green filter in crevices, red on some resin rocks and blue in shadows. Sadly, they were all too weak and didn't make a base look dark enough. But no problem, 3 minutes under a hairdryer and the base was ready for another coat. This time I wanted a stronger effect. I diluted my inks with the same stuff in proportion about 4 to 1 and used a pretty much same approach as before. You might ask why I use so many colors to paint rocks. Nobody will notice that. And you are totally right. But if I used only plain black and grey, everyone would notice that these rocks don't look natural. 
they are simply more colorful in a real life. After another 5 minutes of hair dryer, the base was ready for the next step. Dry brushing. I've simply started with some dark grey and a little lighter one, adding focus to the texture. But grey is not enough. I also brushed some green in flatter recesses and brown in deeper cracks. For me, dry brushing is very addicting. So, as always, I went too far. This base should represent the dusk environment. And now it is way too light. Well, let's make this mistake a happy little accident and use it to our advantage. One more layer of filters will fix it and add even more interesting texture. I just changed proportions to 2 to 1 ink to diluents, so they won't cover all of my dry brushing. I could probably do this all in 2 free steps, but you know, everybody is smarter after finishing the process. I could stop here, but I wanted a few of rocks to look a little different. I painted some of them red, some yellow, some green and even some blue. But for all of them I used very diluted paint and precise brush to leave some visible brush strokes and dots. I even painted a wave texture on a flat surface so it looks like a broken rock. This stage of painting took me about an hour. Before I got to crystals, I wanted to prepare their surroundings with some OSL effects. At this stage it was very simple. I painted risen fragments of this area with white and used a magenta filter. Simple stuff. Next I painted all of crystals white. Violet and magenta colors lose lots of saturations if painted over black or even worse, brown. First I painted crystals violet and I started mixing in some pink and painting some random lines and patches on different planes. Every time I went with a lighter layer, I painted smaller and smaller areas. Lastly, I painted all the edges white, mostly with side of my brush. I tried to paint thinnest possible lines, but I didn't stress out too much about mistakes. Now to put this mess together, I painted all over the crystals with a magenta filter. All lighter lines got instantly darker and violet shadows went warmer and a little brighter, bringing a feeling of uniformity. While the filter was drying, I painted those two sticks in the front in a similar fashion to anything else here. Overall a dark brown layer, two layers of highlights and finally brown filter. The only thing left was to add reflective edges to crystals, again with white, but this time I didn't paint all of them. I focused only on higher ones, especially facing the front of the base. This time I tried much harder to paint thin lines and corrected all mistakes with a magenta filter. Later on, after gluing a demon, I also made magenta OSL stronger and also added a glow from his weapon. I lost a footage of this fragment, but the process was pretty much the same as with Crystal's Glow. So white highlights and colorful filter. Now the most interesting part, at least for me, the background. I'm a miniature painter and canvas painting scares me a little. There are plenty of tutorials on the internet and I even painted two small pictures last year but I still felt this is a terra incognita for me. At first I just sprayed my background board white, but it went terrible with all these cracks and texture. I decided to glue in some flat plastic and then spray paint it again, this time with dark blue. 
I thought it would make painting easier because I wanted to paint a dark background with a thunderstone. And it did. Lucky me. Then I used some heavy body acrylics to paint a gradient on the background. With those paints it's quite easy. Through all the process I had a reference picture on my phone close by. I painted some happy little black clouds. Next I painted some tiny joyful mountains with delightful snow on top. And happy little highlights where the lightning would be. And a little happy portal to oblivion. With a petite joyful army of demons burning the world. Oh, and not forget about the delightful burning town and castle. To finalize the picture I painted striking lightning and made mountains darker. Funny stuff. It wasn't easy to work with heavy body acrylics. They behave differently, leave physical texture and are terrible to paint small details with them. But overall, fun process. I even feel like painting some more of those. So some kind of proper tutorial in the future is possible. And here is a final result. I'm really proud of how it came in the end. Complementary colors work together really nice, and there is a good balance of strong saturated fire colors and magenta crystals with dull bluish skin and grey base. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this little different video with some more narration and little less theory. Let me know in the comments. With that being said, Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!